God bless each and every one of you today. We want to welcome you to a special broadcast today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What we want to talk about is a special subject that sometimes many people grapple with. It says, when it comes to long life and to healing, there are many who question if it's God's will that they live long and that they be healed. God answers these questions in his word. God's will is his word. Again, God's will is his word. God wants his children to have a long life and to be healed. There is a scripture that says, whose report will you believe? You might believe the report of some others, but this day, this day, by the Spirit of God, let the Lord minister to your heart and to our hearts about that God wants his children to have long life and to be healed. And that God's will is his word. Let's address that first. That God's will is his word. Because sometimes they don't know what the will of God is. They say, well, if it's the will of God for me to uh, live a long time, perhaps it, it's not God's will. But well, we want to look at that today. And let me build your faith by the Spirit of God on that subject. In 1 John 5 and verse 14 it says, and this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. In the Living Bible, that verse in 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, and we are sure of this, that he will listen to us whenever we ask him for anything in line with his will. And if we really know he's listening when we talk to him and make our requests, then we can be sure that he will answer us. So he says if we ask anything, that's a very special special scripture. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we, when we look at this fact that God's will, we want you to know that God's will is his word. How do we know that? We have in our Bible, it's called the Old and the New Testament. A testament is a person's will. A testament is a person's will. You know their last will and testament? It's a, per, a, a person's will. Bible, Old and New Testament is God's will. His word to us. If you want to find out the will of God, you will find it in the 66 books of the Bible. 39 books in the Old Testament and 29 books in the New Testament. In 2 Timothy 3 verse 15 through 17 it says, And that from a child that has known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. It says in verse 16, all scripture, that means the word of God is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished under all good works. In one translation, it says that God's word is God breathed. It says, from infancy you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for instruction, for conviction, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, fully equipped for every good work. Psalms 119 and verse 105 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. God's word will illuminate your way. It will give you the light that you need for daily living. In Psalms 119 and verse 130 it says, The entrance of thy words give light, and it giveth understanding unto the simple. In the NIV of that verse in Psalms 119, 130, it says, The unfolding of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. We're establishing that God's will is his word. It says in the NLT Bible of that verse, The teaching of your word gives light. So even the simple can understand. And that's what we're going to do for these just next few moments. We want to shed some light on what is God's will concerning long life. And then what is God's will concerning healing? Does he want us healed? Does he put weakness and sickness and disease on us? Well, we're going to look at that today. And I can say that it is God's will that we live a long life. It is God's will that we be healed in Jesus' name. 
let's look at first I'm going to go to a very familiar scripture that many people quote all the time and that's Psalms 90 and verse 10 Psalms 90 and verse 10 says the days of our years are three score years and ten and if by reason of strength they be four score years yet is their strength labor and sorrow for it is soon cut off and we fly away it says in the AMPC Bible, the Amplified Bible, it says in Psalms 90 and verse 10, the days of our years are threescore years and ten, seventy years. Or if even if by reason of strength fourscore years, it says in parenthesis, eighty years, yet is there pride in additional years, only labor and sorrow, for it is soon gone and we fly away. He begins to talk about the brevity of life. But also, we have to understand that when the bar was set, and people quote that, uh, that the days of our years are 70 years, and if by reason of strength they're 80 years, that particular verse was addressed to the children of Israel who had been disobedient, who had come out of Egypt and refused at first to go into the promised land. And because they refused to go into the promised land, the Lord had let them know that all of that generation was going to die out and that their children were going to be the ones who would go into the promised land. And it says in the footnotes of the Amplified Classic Bible, it says, this psalm is credited to Moses, who is interceding with God to remove the curse, which made it necessary for every Israelite over 20 years of age when they rebelled against God at Kadesh Barnea to die before reaching the promised land in Numbers 14, verse 26 to 35. Moses says most of them are dying at 70 years of age, and that by reason of strength, some of them will live to 80. This number has often, he says, been mistaken as a set span of life for all mankind. It was not intended to refer to anyone except those disobedient Israelites who refused to go into the promised land under the curse during that particular 40 years. 70 years never has been the average span of life for humanity. When Jacob, the father of the 12 tribes, had reached 130 years, he complained that he had not attained to the years of his immediate ancestors. In fact, Moses himself lived to be 120 years. Aaron, 123, Miriam, several years older, and Joshua, 110 years of age. Note as well that in the millennial, a person down at 100 will still be thought to be a child. That's found in Isaiah 65 and verse 20. There are ones who talk about the law of what is called the first mention. Where is this about long life or life or the age of how long a person will live mentioned? We saw in Genesis 6 and verse 3, he said, your days shall be 120 years. Well, that changes this whole bar of this thing. See, 70 and by reason of strength, 80. If a person is half the age of 70, they would say at 35, they're middle aged. Well, we that are older know that 35 is not middle aged. It's not a middle aged. And that if they lived 80, 40, they say is middle aged, but it's not. I had my second child in my 40s. One of my, uh, I'm mean, sorry, my second daughter in my 40s. Glory to God. And so we see that the bar has been set 120 years. In fact, when a person is 60, they're only middle aged. When they get 60 years old, they're only middle aged. They can bow into this thing and say, oh man, I'm old because somebody says that. But there are so many young people. I'm telling you, there are so many people that are in their 50s and in their 60s that look so very young. And some of them are so surprised that they look so young. But there are some people who bow into it in their 30s and 40s and look old as some people in their 70s. So we see that when a person, if you look at the bar and set the bar to 120, according to Genesis 6 and verse 3, then we see that if a person lives uh, to be 60 years old, they're only middle-aged. Between 60 and 90 is middle-aged. They won't even be considered elderly until are getting to the older part, until 90 to 120. And there are so many people that are living over 100 years old. And so many people that are living longer. 
that have just not bowed into it. So long life is, is one of the is one of the things that God wants his children to have. The word of God says in Genesis 15 and verse 15, he told the patriarchs, you shall be buried in a good old age. It says in Deuteronomy 11, verse 9 and verse 21, it will be well with you and your days shall be multiplied and prolonged as the days of heaven upon the earth. God wants us to have a long, good life. That's his will for our life. Psalms 41 and verse 2 says, I will preserve you and keep you alive. Psalms 91 and verse 16 is one of my favorite, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on uh, as I'm talking. He says, I will satisfy you with long life and show you my salvation. I'm going to go into that a, long time, a little bit later on, a little bit more, because God said, I want to satisfy. You know, have you ever sat down and you weren't quite satisfied when you ate something and you got a little bit more? You went back, maybe you put a little bit on your plate and you went back for second helpings because you weren't quite satisfied or satiated yet. God said, I want to satisfy you with long life and show you my salvation. That's what God says. He says the word of God in Psalms 91 and verse 16. And again, like I said, we'll come back to that because the question will be asked. God will say, are you satisfied with the number of years that you have now? If not, God said, ask me. I'll give you more. I'll satisfy you. He loves you. He delights in you. That's the God that we serve. He loves you. He said, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And God wants to satisfy us with long life and show us his salvation. Then in Proverbs 4 and verse 10, it says, the years of your life shall be many. Proverbs 4 and verse 10. Then it says in Isaiah 38, verse 16 and verse 20, I will recover you and make you to live. I'm ready to save you. Then he says in Isaiah 46 and verse 4, to your old age and gray hairs will I carry you and I will deliver you. It says in Amos 5, verse 4 and 6, seek me and you shall live. It says in Matthew 9, verse 29, according to your faith, be it unto you, be it unto me, be it unto you. I'm sorry. God wants us to trust him, to trust him that he will give us long life. It says in according to your faith, be it unto you in Matthew 9, 29. And then a, a scripture that means so very much. Jesus said in John 10, 10, I am come that you might have a life. And that you may have it more abundantly. He wants us to have an abundant good life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It says in Proverbs 3, 1 and 2. And Proverbs 3, verse 15 and 16. There, there are blessings. There are blessings that come of having the wisdom of God. It says she is more precious than rubies. That's the wisdom of God. Nothing you desire compares with her. It says in verse 16 of Proverbs 316, long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. God said, I've honored you in your life. I've given you riches. I've called rich. He said, don't you know that I also have long life for you? No matter what somebody might say, God wants us to have long life. It says all her ways are pleasant and all her paths are peaceful. It says in the King's James Bible of that verse, length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. In Proverbs 3, 1 and 2, it says, my son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. This, both, this speaks of both quality and quality of life. Peace des describes good, fruitful days of blessings and wholeness. Length of days and long life speaks of many days. So this tells us that God wants us to have a full, satisfying and long life, which is possible if we will pay attention to God's word, which is his will. God's word is his will. He says it. Proverbs 3 
13, 18 says again, happy is the man who finds wisdom and the man who gains understanding for her proceeds are better than the profits of silver and her gain than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies and all the things you may desire cannot compare with her. Length of days is in her right hand and her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her and happy are all who retain her. God's wisdom is found in his word. Here God is motivating us to seek and find his wisdom by promising us that if we find her and take hold of her and keep her, she will bring life and length of days to us. So again, we see his will for us is long life. Proverbs 4 verse 10 says, my son, receive my sayings. And as a result, the years of your life shall be many. God wants us to have many years of life through receiving his word. In Proverbs 10 and verse 27, it said, The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Sin will always bring death, but God wants you to prolong your days. You're in him. When those of us who are in him, he said, I want you to have a long life. Because God has called each one of us to a purpose and to a plan for our lives. He has a purpose and a plan for us. In 1 Corinthians 3, 14, he said, if you walk in my ways and keep my commandments, then I will lengthen your days. Here God said to Solomon, as he says to us, if you walk in my ways, I will lengthen your days. God wants us to live and live long and strong and give us the promise and gives us the promise of long life. In Exodus 20 and verse 12, they call this the first commandment with a promise. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. God says if you will honor, he didn't tell you to honor your father and mother for their performance, but even for their position. Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. This is so important that God made this one of the Ten Commandments that he wrote with his own finger in stone. It is the first commandment again with a promise. He promises us that if we respect and honor our parents, our days will be long upon the earth. See, God has, he, he's had, has a will about long life. He's shown you that long life means something to him. He said, I'm going to give you a promise. If you will honor your father and mother, your days will be long. In Deuteronomy 5 and verse 16, it says, uh, that one we just read was Exodus 20 and verse 12. Then again, in Deuteronomy 5 verse 16, it says, honor your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you that your days may be long and that it may be well with you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. Forty years later, God repeated and enhanced the promise. And again, as we read before in Exodus 20, verse 12 of long life. Now he promises both quantity and quality of life. Again, not only will our days on earth be long, many days, but they will also be good days. It will be well with thee. In Psalms 34, and verse 12 and 13, it says, who is the man? And we could say, who is the man or woman who desires life and loves many days? that he may see good. He said, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Here God encourages our desire to see many good days by giving us a major key to attaining this. He said, keep our tongue from speaking evil. He promises that if we will guard our tongue, we will enjoy a long life and see many good days. Again, Psalms 91, which is full of promises of how God will preserve and protect our life if we will trust in him. It concludes with God speaking directly in verse 14 through 16. Again, I'm going back over that. He said, because he has set his love on me, I will deliver him. I will set him on high for he has known my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show and manifest to him my salvation and my perseverance. Uh, Pers uh, pers uh, uh, pre preservation from death. My preservation from death. Sorry, I got kind of tongue tied a little bit. In Psalms 19 
91 and verse 16 again, God promises for the man who lives in the secret place of the Almighty, under the shadow of his wings, he said, with long life will I satisfy him. To satisfy means to be full, as in after a good meal. God wants us to be satisfied, for us to go through a full life cycle, and for it not to be cut short. I give them life, long life, and show them how I can save. Hallelujah. That's what it says in the Jerusalem Bible. That is what God wants to do for us. His best will be his best will for us is to be satisfied. So if we're not satisfied with 70 years then we can go on to 80, 90, 100, even 120 until we are satisfied. I want to tell you, I said I was coming back to that Psalms 91, 16. The story of Kenneth Hagin is very instructive to us. He was healed as a 17-year-old from a terminal blood disease and paralysis by acting on Mark 11, 24. Mark 11, 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, what thing, what, whatever things you ask or desire, including healing, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Uh, Kenneth Hagin, who was a, a very known uh, minister, well-known minister by some, having been bed bound for some time after, rec after, bed be after receiving his healing, he was not able to get up and go to breakfast. However, naturally, he was still weak. So after breakfast, he went back to his room to rest and he gives a testimony and says soon afterwards, he heard a deep supernatural audible voice come to his mind, trying to convince him that it was God's will for him to die. Remember that just as faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10, 17, fear also comes by hearing and hearing the lies of the devil. That's why God had me to make this particular uh, broadcast today. He may have me to make it, he said, because it's just not enough for you to write it down. It doesn't say faith comes by reading. It says faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, God is allowing for this word to get in your life to let you know that he said, my will for your life is long for my will for your life is long life. You can either believe my report or you can believe the devil's report or the world's report or the medical report, or you can believe my report to you. So in the story of Kenneth Hagin. Glory to God. It says, having been bed bound, you know, he he uh, heard that that uh, audible voice in his mind trying to convince him that it was God's will for him to die. And so then he heard the voice of the Lord speak to his heart. He heard that scripture with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Then he said, who said that? Then a voice said the 91st Psalms. He, he looked it up and read it. With long life will I satisfy him. He thought, well, I'm only 17. I'm not satisfied yet. The Bible promises I will be satisfied with a long life. Realizing this, Kenneth Hagin knew the first voice was Satan, impersonating God, trying to make him give up and passively accept sickness and disease, death as God's will. So Kenneth stood up and declared out loud. He said, devil, I'm not going to die today. I'm not going to die tomorrow. I'm not going to die next week. I'm not going to die next year. I'm not going to die in five years. I'm not going to die in 10 years. I'm not going to die in 20 years. And he went on and he began to go up to 30, 40, 50. And he said, I will be satisfied with a long life. And he lived well beyond that. And it came to pass that he did live a long and fruitful life before going on to be with the Lord. Likewise, we need to establish our faith now in God's promises of long life as this 17-year-old did then. The promises of long life are not just in the Old Testament, but they are reaffirmed in the New Testament. Glory to God. Glory to God. God wants you to have long life. He wants to satisfy you with long life so that you can say, Lord, I'm looking to you to satisfy me with long life. I will not set myself in agreement. When anything that the enemy would say, Lord, thank you for long life for me. And even if there is pain, ask God to take away the pain. Ask God to take care of you. Don't give up. Don't give over. Don't give out. Lastly, God's will is for his children to be healed. Jesus, the word of God, took, tells us that he took on his own body every one of our weaknesses, sicknesses, and diseases. And by his stripes, we're healed. 
Healing belongs to us. It is the children's bread. First, let's look at what he says about healing in the Old Testament. He said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. In Exodus 15, 26, I will take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days I will fulfill. In Exodus 23, verse 25 and 26, he says in Deuteronomy 7, 15, I will not put any of the diseases you're afraid of on you, but I will take all sickness away from you. Then he says in Deuteronomy 28, 61, and also in Galatians 3, 13, I redeemed you. From every sickness and every plague. It says in Psalms 30 and verse 1 and 2, I've healed you and brought up your soul from the grave. I've kept you alive from going down into the pit. In Psalms 103 and verse 3, it says, I heal all your diseases. Psalms 107 and verse 20 says, I sent my word and healed you and delivered you from your destructions. Then he says in, in Proverbs 4.22, my words are life to you and health and medicine to all your f flesh. Proverbs 4.22. He says in Isaiah 38 verse 16 and verse 17, I will recover you and make you to live. I'm ready to save you. Isaiah 53 and verse 4, very familiar scripture. He says what? He said, I bore your sickness. I carried your pains. Isaiah 53, 10, he said, I was put to sickness for you. Sickness was put on me. He said in Isaiah 53, 5, with my stripes, you're healed. Isaiah 57 and verse 19 says, I will heal you. Glory to God. And the word of God goes on a little further. He said in Isaiah 58 and verse 8, your light shall break forth as the morning. And your health shall spring forth speedily. Again, that's Isaiah 58 and verse 8. He says, I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, saith the Lord. In Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. Jeremiah 30 and verse 17. He said in Jeremiah 33 and verse 6, Behold, I will bring in health and cure, and I will cure you, and will reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. That's Jeremiah 33 and verse 6. It says in Matthew 8, 17, Jesus took our infirmities. Jesus bore our sicknesses. Then it says in Matthew 14 and 14, Jesus was moved with compassion toward the sick and healed them. He, and then it says in Matthew 4, 23, he healed all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. In Matthew 12 and verse 15 and Hebrews 13 and 8, it says Jesus healed them all. Matthew 12, 15 and Hebrews 13 and verse 8. In Matthew 14 and verse 36, it says as many as touched him are made perfectly whole. Then it says in, uh, that we learned that in Matthew 15, 26, healing is the children's bread. And if we're a child of God, healing belongs to us. We didn't say that the enemy, because that's his job, is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and more abundantly. He says in Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, shall be delivered. We call upon Jesus. It says in Mark 7, verse 37, Jesus did all things well. He made the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. He said, Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. In Mark 9, verse 23 and 11, Mark 11 and verse 23 and 24. Then it says, when hands were laid on the sick, they shall recover. He said, you can lay your hands on the sick in Mark 16, 18, and they shall recover. Jesus healed all those who had need of healing in Luke 9 and verse 11. Jesus said, I'm not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. In Luke 9, verse 56, he said, that's not from me. I'm not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. John 10, 10, Jesus said, the thief, talking about the devil, cometh not before to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and life more abundantly. In Romans 8, 32, Jesus said, for he, the Lord said, for he who spared not 
the, his only son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things or grant us all things? He said, I gave my son. I watched my son suffer, bleed, and die. Shall I not also give you healing, health, and wholeness? Our eyes are fixed upon God. Then it says in Matthew 7, 11, very familiar scripture, it talks about if ones who are evil know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Oh, beloved, how many of you, and I know that there's some people who are not good parents. There are some people who don't like to do for their children or grandchildren. But you know what? The majority of people that I know and we know, they love their children and they love their grandchildren. God says, if you know how to, if you, those ones who have been born in sin and shaped in iniquity, who have fallen short of the glory of God, if you who are evil and have been evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good things? And that includes healing to those who ask him. God said, I love you so much. And I'm wanting to do you. Uh, uh, and he said, we must have faith in God. Trust him to be able to do it. Trust in his love to us. Trust in him that he said, this is not me doing this. The thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and destroy. But I'm come that you might have life and life more abundantly. He said, when my body was broken and my blood was shed. I took on all your sins upon my own body and all weaknesses, sickness, and disease. He said, trust me, walk by faith and not by sight. He encourages us. Glory to God. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a bed of roses because the thief cometh not. He walks up and down to and fro seeking whom he may devour. But we're ones that stand upon God's word. And we look to the Lord. Lord, we look to you for healing, health wholeness, soundness, and wellness. And then we look to God for the greatness of his love because out of his love, he's the one that brings healing to our bodies. I love the scripture in John 3 and verse 16 because it tells of the magnitude and the greatness of God's love for us. The magnitude and the greatness of his love. He says, for God so loved the world. He didn't just say that God loved the world, but he had to put, he said, God so loved the world. Do you know that's a lot of love? Do you know that God has a lot of love just for you and me? God's got a lot of love. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That means he gave the very best that he had to give, which is his precious darling son, Jesus Christ. That it says that whoever believes in him, would not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, glory to God for the love of God, the greatness and the magnitude of his love for me and you and for us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The song says, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Now, my prayer today is that you will receive the word of the Lord, which again is the will of God, that God wants his children to live a long and healthy life. I want you to say with me tonight or today, Lord, that's right. Say, Lord, I receive my healing today. And I thank you, Lord, for satisfying me with a long, abundant life. In Jesus' name. Also say, Lord, I thank you that by the stripes that were taken on Jesus' body, I'm healed. In Jesus' name. Also, I want you to say another thing with me. Say, I am the redeemed of the Lord. And in obedience to your word, Lord God, in Psalms 107 and verse 2, you said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. 
Say with me. Jesus Christ has redeemed me with his own precious blood and his body that was broken for me. I'm redeemed off of the auction block of the dominion of sin and death. I'm redeemed from weakness, sickness, disease, infirmity, pain, and discomfort. I'm redeemed from poverty, lack, and want, from all debt, debt, the EBT, and from not enough. Say with me, I'm redeemed from every bondage and every habit. I'm redeemed from every disturbance of my peace and joy. I'm redeemed from every work of the devil. I am the redeemed of the Lord, and I say so. Glory to God. Now, as we close today in this particular service and in this particular broadcast today, there may be someone who's listening and saying, well, I, I don't even know if I'm saved or not, or I don't even know if I'm really in the right place with God. Well, let's take care of that. This day, if you're not sure of your salvation and would like to make the quality decision to give your heart and life to Jesus, the word of God says in John 1 and verse 12, but and he gives us, this is the Bible formula of what God gives us in order to become a child of God. See, God wants us to have a relationship with him. Not just religion, but a relationship. It says in John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So here we see. He said if we would believe on him and receive him, we would become children of God, a child of God. Then it says in Romans 10, verse 9 and 10, that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. There's that word saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made into salvation. Now I want you to say this prayer, but before we do also in Romans 10, 13, it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this day, I want you to pray this prayer with me because I'd like you to make that quality decision to receive Christ and to give your heart and life to him, to Jesus. Please pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus. That's right. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you into my heart and life. I repent of all my sins. I receive you this day as my Lord and Savior. I do believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that God raised you and resurrected you from the dead. I give my heart and life to you. Now, if you prayed that prayer according to Acts 20, and verse 32, Acts 20 and verse 32, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are set apart in Jesus Christ. I want to welcome you to the royal family of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A child of God with all the rights and privileges that come from being a child of God. And may God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, God bless you.